What's good? Welcome to the first episode of a new series that I'm starting on my channel called That Ain't It, which is basically where I comment on something that I came across on the internet and subsequently came to the conclusion that that ain't it. Yesterday, someone tagged me in a tweet made by a company called Skin White Philippines. You heard that correctly, Skin White. Now, I personally am very familiar with this brand and I'm very familiar with these products. And for those of you that don't know, I'm half Filipino. I'm half black and half Filipino. And I used to live and go to school in the Philippines when I was younger. And while I was living there, I was bullied by classmates, but also like strangers <laughs> um, for having dark skin. Colorism is so prevalent in Filipino culture because of our colonial history with Spain and also the US. Now, here's what I'm not gonna do in this video. I'm not going to go deep into the history of colorism in the Philippines or in Asia. If you don't know what colorism is, you know, you could Google it. Google is free. I am not going into the history of colorism in this video. Another thing that I want to say before we start getting into these ads is that colorism is a global issue because European colonialism was global and colorism affects different communities differently. So what is considered dark skinned is relative to the culture. In other words, context matters. You know, we have to use our contextual analysis skills when we are talking about other cultures. So while I acknowledge that I am considered light skin in black communities and essentially benefit from colorism in black communities, at the same time, I am still considered dark in Asia. That's just the way it is. You can argue with your mama, but that's just facts. All right, so this is the ad uh, that I was tagged in yesterday. Um, so there's like two twins. One of them is light skinned. One of them is dark skinned. And the text reads, dark or white, you are beautiful. And at first glance, like on, on a surface level, it seems like a pretty lovely message, right? You know, if you saw this without context, you'd be like, dark or white, you are beautiful. Aw, that's nice. But then you look further down the image and it says, skin white. <laughs> Let's unpack this, shall we? First of all, you gotta admire that uh, the irony and the cognitive dissonance uh, <laughs> of a skin whitening company that sells skin whitening products just to say, dark or white, you are beautiful. Buy our skin whitening products, skin white. Another thing that I noticed was weird is the, the wording of this ad. So it says dark or white, not dark or light, dark or white. It's like they, like they are establishing whiteness as its own thing and anything that's darker than white is dark. <laughs> like you could be like a very light brown, but if you're not white, you're dark. <laughs> so what I did is I called out this tweet. This is not the first time I've called out this brand on Twitter, by the way. Um, I called out this tweet and it kind of like went uh, like semi-viral. Um, and the thing that happened is something that I always like come across whenever I talk about colorism. Um, two years ago, I created a hashtag called Magandang Morenex, which literally translates to beautiful brown skin in Tagalog. Let me just say there were way more supporters of the hashtag hashtag than there were haters but um there are like some outliers of people who don't really fully understand what i'm challenging so someone replied this skin lightening products can be used for acne scars certain people may choose to use them for overall skin lightening but that does not mean it's the main purpose of the product please don't be stubborn boo boo and there are some companies that sell products for evening skin tone. So I'm not gonna deny that these products don't exist. And honestly, I don't even think it's a bad thing that these exist because I feel like those products exist on the basis of like uh, perfectionism, like wanting or seeking perfectionism than it is based on like race or like literally skin color. So these people are right. There are products that exist that uh, are meant to even skin tone. However, when your brand is called fair and lovely or skin white, 
it becomes pretty evident of what your brand's mission and purpose and philosophies are. And actually, this is another ad from Skin White that I wanna show you guys. I called them out on this like a year ago or maybe like a year and a half ago. Um, this is from Skin White Teens. They have a separate brand for, for the teens for the young people. And there are literally white people on this ad for skin whitening products. That's really incredible. And I'm just gonna show you a few other ads from different brands, uh, different skin whitening brands that just shows how prevalent colorism is in the Philippines. 10% lighter, 100% more numbers. <laughs> Soft and white glutathione when fair skin is not enough. Yeah, because you want to be whiter than white when you are indigenous to a tropical island in the Southeast Pacific, right on the equator, where uh, you know the climate and uh, geography would make being brown the norm, essentially. So we wanna be whiter than white, right? Which brings me to my next ad, which is also from Avon. Um, Miss Ann Curtis, or I guess Mrs. Ann Curtis, because she's married now. Uh, Mrs. Ann Curtis did a little promotional video for Avon Skin So Soft, um, and she said this. Hi, this is Ann Curtis for Avon Skin So Soft. Watch out for her latest product from Skin So Soft, Glutathione with Vitamin C. So together, let's move from white to whiter. I think the purpose of these products is very clear. Wouldn't you say so? Also, I wanna recognize that those last two ads that I showed you featured two people who were both half white. If you are not already this skin color from being half white, you are not going to be able to achieve the same fairness from a drugstore product. These companies are selling lies. <laughs> so I explained to this person, I'm Filipino and I used to live in the Philippines and overall skin whitening is absolutely the main purpose of these products and of these brands. And so they changed, uh, they, they pivoted and said, oh, well, it's their choice to lighten. Obviously, it is their choice. Y'all can do whatever you want with your bodies. I really don't care. That don't got shit to do with me. I don't care what choice you make for yourself. What I do care about is the reason, the underlying reason why you feel like you need to make that choice. Whenever I call out colorism, I never call out people who chose to use skin whitening products because I don't think they're the problem. Colorism is systemic and cultural. And I think that very little is done when there is time spent calling out individuals and no time spent on calling out the system or calling out those in power who perpetuate the issue. So obviously it is everybody's choice to do whatever they want, but no one just wakes up one morning completely unaffected by other people's opinions or by the media and says, you know what? I would look better if I had white skin. No one thinks that without being told that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never had a problem with my skin tone until I moved to the Philippines and was told that my skin tone was ugly, that it was bad. That is really powerful messaging for kids to hear. You're really impressionable when you're young. And thank God that my mother never did this to me. But some people tell their own kids that they're ugly because they're dark. Their own children. So imagine being a child and hearing from someone that, you're, that you look up to and someone that you're supposed to love. Imagine that figure, your parent, your mom, telling you that you're ugly because you're dark and that you have to use skin whitening products. Kids' brains are like sponges. You know, they just soak that shit up. So sure, it is their choice and you know, y'all can do whatever you want with your bodies. I really don't care. But whenever I challenge colorism, I'm not challenging those people. I'm not calling them out for making that decision. So anyway, back to the ad. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out is that these are real twins, um, but they're both light-skinned. In reality, they are both light-skinned, um, but Skin White put dark makeup on one of them to make her look dark skinned. They literally put her in brown face for this advertisement that is supposed to empower people with darker skin. 
Okay, so like whatever, I called them out or whatever, and then I went to their page and they did um, a, they did a commercial um, with the same messaging. It's under the same campaign, where is it? Here it is. So the text says, dark or white, you are beautiful. Hashtag dark or white is beautiful. So let's watch the commercial, shall we? <laughs> want to comment on this because <laughs> this is very subtle messaging right here but the light-skinned person is number one and the darker skinned person is number two perhaps that wasn't even their intention maybe th they didn't even think about it but there's very subtle messaging that you have to be responsible of when you are creating media when you are a producer when you're behind the scenes and you're literally creating culture through media you have to really be like cognizant of stuff like this you can't just like do that <laughs> you are beautiful no matter what they say words can bring you down you are beautiful no matter what they say, yes, words can bring you down, which is very rich coming from a skin whitening company. Love that for you guys. Oh. This one, okay, this one is what really got me. So remember the number one and number two from uh, wearing the soccer jerseys? So they told the darkie, the number two, to get on the ground and act as the shadow of the light-skinned boy. Someone brought up this idea in the ad agency board meeting and they were like, that's a wonderful idea. And then they actually got to set and they filmed it and then they actually uh, got it approved and put it on the internet. That's really incredible. You are beautiful in every single way. Yes, words can bring you down. Okay, so all of these models basically are twins and they're all light skinned and they just take one of the twins and they put them in brown face. That's what they did for this whole commercial, by the way. Just wanted to let y'all know. <laughs> God, I didn't even catch this the first time I watched it. They did her so dirty. Like you can tell that's brown face. You can tell that's makeup. Well, I mean, you can really tell it's makeup on anyone in this video, but this one is like a particularly really something else. <laughs> I just really love that juxtaposition of uh, dark or white, you are beautiful, skin white. I just really love it. I think that's really amazing. All right, so the commercial was, was trash, whatever. So as a cherry on top, I was going through the replies and there are a bunch of Twitter accounts presumably created by skin white that are defending the campaigns. And the only reason why I suspect that they're created by the company is because all of these accounts have been created like within the past week and all of the tweets on their profiles are just them, like accounts defending the campaign. So, you know, we, we love damage control. You gotta, you gotta love how this all played out. <laughs> So Skin White Philippines, I totally understand and acknowledge where y'all was trying to go with it, but I'm also here to tell you that that ain't it. To freedom! And that was my first episode of That Ain't It. Uh, if you have any other things that you come across on the internet that you would love to hear my perspective or point of view on, be sure to leave it in the comments down below or like, tweet me about it, you know what I'm saying, tag me in it or whatever. Um, you can also support the hashtag that I created, Magandang Morenex, by um, going to the hashtag, retweeting other people's selfies. Um, if you are a dark-skinned Filipino or even a dark-skinned Asian and you want to share your experience with colorism, I would highly recommend, you know, going on Twitter and tweeting that out if you feel like you want to do it. Um, people are also doing it on Instagram. I originally created it for Twitter, but it made its way to uh, Instagram and Facebook. So wherever you want to spread love and pos positivity, um, 
just go ahead and do it. You know, reply to other people's tweets and tell them that, you know, you feel them and like that you understand where they're coming from or, you know, gas them up, you know what I'm saying? You just, you never know what type of impact that you can have on other people's lives by just, you know, saying a really nice thing, just by leading with love. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you like this video and like this series. Subscribe if you like this video and you like this series. And I'll catch you guys next time.